film for people in this audience to watch because it's exactly why we need to have maths outreach um, to reach the people who detest maths. In this film, various um, themes are explored. Firstly, maths is evil. Um, the second theme that was explored was mathematicians are either evil or stupid or mad or all three. Um, now, there might be some truth in those two, but they, they explored another one where they, they basically tried to, and they got various people who say that we hate maths because it's a very non-creative subject and only boring nutters want to do it. Um, now, there might be some slight truth in the first two, but absolutely I disagree with the third um, to the extent that um, um, I believe it to be utter, utter nonsense. Um, and this, in this short talk, I, I want to kind of talk a little bit about why I find maths a very playful and a very creative subject. Um, and, oops, press the button too many off times. There we are. Um, and I want to argue that maths is really the most creative subject there is. It is the ultimately creative and playful subject. And I really want any museum of maths to really emphasize <laughs> the creative and playful way. Various ways that it, it is um, creful, uh, creative. Firstly, um, mathematicians take us into realms uh, of human thought that no one's ever thought before. And they can take us into new universes that no one's ever thought about. Um, another reason it's playful is an enormous number of the games that people love playing are based <laughs> on mathematics. Um, myself and my son have just written a very learned article on the mathematics of Mornington Crescent. Um, some of the non-English people in the audience might not know this game, but it's wonderful mathematics. Uh, maths is involved in Sudoku, Game of Life, number puzzles and all this. And lots of people enjoy doing puzzles, even if they're not thinking they're doing maths, but they are, of course. Um, here's something which I think is terribly important from a museum perspective. If you want to be a particle physicist, you've got to go to a particle accelerator. If you want to be a chemist, you often got to do things which are far too dangerous to do in a museum. But in a museum, anyone can do mathematics. You can create mathematics, you can do mathematics. The three places I do mathematics best are in bed, in the bath, and on the bus. Okay? So you can do maths anywhere. It's a very creative subject. Um, and I would argue that maths, if I was asked to define maths, it's the process of finding patterns in life. How do you find patterns? You play. Let's see if we can teach people that it's important to play to do good mathematics. OK, so um, how can we make maths more playful? This is something I, I try to achieve um, in my teaching. Certainly, we should try to achieve it in our outreach. I certainly think we should try to achieve it in museums. And I would argue, and um, I will give an example at the end, of how we can just be playful in all of our lives by just thinking mathematically. Um, so here's some various ways. I think it's terribly important when you teach maths or when you show maths to show that it is a creative subject, that it involves discovery, it involves experiment. Um, to show that maths isn't a subject which is dusty and dry and just in textbooks, it's a subject full of awe and wonder. Um, here's my favourite bit of maths in the whole world. Um, if, ever, if anyone says, define maths for me, I write down that formula and say, that's maths. Okay? Because it's much more than just numbers on a page. It, it really means something. And it isn't it insanely brilliant that pi over 4 is equal to that thing on the right. And, and, and that's kind of what I try to get across when I'm talking about outreach. Um, I think it's very important, and we, we've already seen some of this, in that lovely presentation we had about MoMath, um, to find the links between maths and art, maths and music, maths and real life, and above all, the links between maths and people. Um, I've had people in schools um, say, oh, I don't know maths, I'm, not a I'm a people person, I don't know maths. And I said, well, actually, I know lots of mathematicians, and nearly all of them are actually people. Um, <laughs> so um, <laughs> there are one or two exceptions. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Um, and of course, we all want to show in our outreach, this is, this is second nature to all of you, that maths is fun and maths is useful. So let's show some examples of where I see um, creative and playful maths um, coming up in the sort of outreach we do. Um, one of the things the Royal Institution does uh, a lot on, um, and we're going to hear a lot more about this from Sam Durbin later on, um, is maths masterclasses. 
Um, in a mass masterclass, you get lots of kids together, typically for a morning, and you do fun things. What's the best thing you can do with them? Kids, get them to play. And this was a workshop that I did actually in Vancouver quite recently, um, getting kids to play. Do you, anyone know what one of those is called? 72 pencils. 72 pencils, and it's called, I'll give you a clue, it's got an X in it, given we're in matrix with X. That's called a hexastix. Hexastix. They are wonderful. You take 72 pencils, you spend a whole morning, you build one of those, and look at that face. Okay, so <laughs> that's maths. Who said that? Uh, that's a person. Yeah, very good. So um, you can play with pencils, and you learn lots. So you can learn, there's a ton of group theory in that if you want to learn that symmetry. Um, <coughs> here's another example. Um, playing with shapes. So one of the things I do uh, a lot of is go to these big fairs, like the Big Bang Fair. Um, and in the Big Bang Fair, um, you are surrounded by companies that bring exhibits which cost approximately 20,000 or 50,000 um, pounds. Instead, I take one of these along, which I was given free as a Christmas present, and that will amuse kids for half an hour at least, if not more. Um, kids love playing, they love exploring with the patterns and putting one of those in. I hope MoMath stocks those in large numbers because they are great, great fun. Um, Here's something else you can do, um, playing with bubbles. Again, I'm an applied mathematician. I like seeing maths in the real world. Um, and again, here are lots of kids. We were told at, ma at the Big Bang not to bother coming along because no kids would be interested in mathematics. As you can see, they're not interested at all. So um, this is, uh, again, playful maths. Um, one of my favorite bits of maths in your face, um, really showing um, some of the uh, really kind of creative and, and artistic side of maths, is quilting. Um, I'm a real fan of, of, of quilting. I, I'm useless at quilting it myself, but my, my, um, my wife makes lovely quilts. Um, and this was a quilting exhibition I went to recently with all sorts of lovely maths in it. Um, uh, no one can look at that and say that maths isn't creative, maths isn't fun. Um, and what's interesting is that there's some very interesting questions. Uh, there's a lady called uh, De Vries who's in University of Alberta. Um, and um, you can ask people questions about how many quilting patterns are there um, and how do you construct them. There are still big unknown questions out there which a, a school kid can have a go at and they can be at research level maths straight away uh, without having to um, go through a huge mathematical training. And I do encourage people to try quilting if, if you want to do something which is um, highly creative, lots of fun um, and uh, also takes you to the boundaries of mathematics. Um, one of my favourites, um, and of course there's much better people in the audience than this than me, is mathematical magic. Um, by the way, these are some of my lovely students um, um, on my maths communication course. I've been running this course for about 15 years. Uh, we have about 25 students on it each year. Uh, ben Sparks in the audience is one of the key other members doing this. Um, and you can teach um, outreach as an undergraduate course in a way that you can um, fit in with other modules and, and, and it's great because the, the students um, become math communicators and go out and do stuff. Here they are doing some magic tricks. The um, thing about magic is that it taps immediately into the awe and wonder side of maths um, whilst at the same time um, demonstrating um, a lot of key mathematical theorems. Um, just to demonstrate, I have a pack of cards here would anyone like to give me a number between uh, 10 and 20? A whole number, by the way, not 15.6. 14, right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Right, let's check we can do this. What does 1 and 4 add up to? Fantastic, there we are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm sure we're going to have lots of jokes in this uh, session because there is, of course, the joker. Okay. Can anyone see how I did that? No. Okay. Um. All the cards are jokers. No, they're not. Look, they're, they're <laughs> well, demonstrate. Uh, give me another number between 10 and 20. 11. 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 one one. equals. Boy, I was worried there for a minute. One, two, oops, two, and what's the next card? It's a joker. There we are. No. Oh, shoot. <laughs> well, uh, I dropped one. Well, that's a good start. Um, 
<laughs> um, maths always works, even if I don't. Um, the, the math behind this um, is, by the way, never demonstrate magic in the real world, is um, if you take the numbers between uh, 10 and 20 and you add up the digits and subtract them, you always get 9. And I don't know why I didn't get 9, because I must have put the card in the wrong place when I put it back. Um, but um, the, this is, uh, the mathematics behind this is that if you take um, any set of numbers, take the digital root, subtract the digital root from the set of numbers, you get a multiple of 9. That's actually quite a deep mathematical theorem. It's a theorem that kids can play with and experiment with and learn maths from. At the same time, you get the awe and wonder, you also get to see a mathematician being a jerk. OK, so it's kind of fun as well. Um, so that's a kind of demonstration. Um, maths and art is something else you can use to explore um, the, the, uh, uh, the way that maths um, has developed through the centuries and the people have learnt maths by playing with art, I can thoroughly recommend um, Celtic Knots as a, a thing to do if, if you want to um, look at the links between um, mathematics, geometry, art, and in fact number theory. Um, and some of the um, in more interesting results about uh, mathematical divisors can actually be proved using Celtic Knots. Um, I won't have time to do it now, but one of the workshops that I like doing with kids is teaching them the maths behind Celtic Knots giving them a month, giving them time to create beautiful Celtic knots, and we come back and explore the maths and explore the, um, the um, art as well. Um, so I'm going to whiz through to the end. I won't go through the Celtic knots, oh, except that one's very beautiful. Um, and I'd like to tell you just a, a quick story to show that you can be playful in your life with mathematics. You don't have to um, just be playful in your outreach and your teaching. Um, and this is a story which involves this guy. Is he in the audience yet? He will be soon. This is Rob Easterway. Um, I've learnt a lot of good things from Rob Easterway, but one of the things that I've learnt which has carried me through, me through most of my life is a wonderful joke called the orange kangaroo from Denmark. Does anyone know this joke? Um, the way this joke works is you ask someone to think of a number between uh, any number they like, uh, between 1 and 10, they multiply by 9, they add the digits, they take away 5, and you always end up with a number 4. Um, they then have to think of a letter, which um, in order corresponds to that number, and that letter is D. You ask them for a country that begins with the letter D, they come up with Denmark, nearly always. You ask them for an animal which begins with the last letter of that country, it's kangaroo. You ask them for the, um, the uh, colour which ends up with the last letter of that animal, um, it's orange. And you say, well, what are you thinking of? They say, orange kangaroo from Denmark. And you show that picture and everyone claps. <laughs> OK, so, so that's, that's a, a story. I won't do it with you a lot because you'll come up with Disneyland or things like that. As the, as the, uh, um, but that's Rob Easterway. Um, and this involves not just Rob who taught me this, but my wife. There's my wife. Um, <laughs> that's not my wife. That's my wife. Um, dressed up as a hobbit. Um, now, you see, my wife isn't a mathematician. I have difficulties here. She's a very, very keen bird watcher. And when I go bird watching uh, with her, uh, she comes up with all these different, uh, it keeps clicking through. I'll try to behave it. Um, he comes up with all these different types of bird, oriel, cormorant, python, archhatch, albatross, lesser spotted, albatross, and so on. I can't cope with that as a mathematician. So um, I decided to rationalize it. And mathematicians know about set theory. Um, so I came up with the following sets, uh, namely um, all, ma all birds fit into the following six categories. Uh, <coughs> brown birds, black birds, white birds, grey birds, birds of prey, and ducks. OK, so this is the difference between my wife, who's not a mathematician, and me, who is a mathematician. Um, but on one bird watching expedition, I came up with the following problem. Um, we came up with um, uh, this bird, the kingfisher. And it's not a brown bird, it's not a black bird, it's not a white bird, it's not a grey bird, it's not a bird of prey, and it's not a duck. The nearest thing I could come up with was a duck, but it isn't. So I decided on the basis of just one point, there must be a whole extra set of birds, namely birds that begin with the letter K. <laughs> now, I should have taken my advice. And the, uh, moving swiftly on, uh, last year I was asked to do an outreach, maths outreach uh, thing for Radio New Zealand. There I am in Radio New Zealand. You probably recognise this guy. He's one of the dwarves in Lord of the Rings. Um, he hasn't got his makeup on there. Um, and I thought, I'll do the orange kangaroo from Denmark trick, 
Won't that be fun to do it live on radio? Um, but there's a problem. It's New Zealand. They don't like Australians. Sorry, Matt. Um, so we can't use kangaroos. So I came up with the idea of instead having a Kiwi, because they're New Zealanders, and um, we'd have... Um, uh, they come from Denmark, it would be a kiwi, and it would be an indigo kiwi from Denmark. I even bought the kiwi. There we are. So, um, so I, I, I did this trick, and it completely failed. And the reason it fails, I should have followed my own mathematical analysis. Um, my own mathematical analysis has demonstrated from the single point that there's an entire set of birds beginning with the letter K. What I hadn't realised is that every single bird in New Zealand begins with the letter K. <laughs> So there's mathematical theory, and of course, instead of coming up with Kiwi, they came up with one of these, and the entire joke failed, uh, like my magic earlier, um, and oh dear. But we all had a good laugh, and, and I hope I got across in that um, uh, radio show the fact that maths isn't a dry subject, it's not a subject from textbooks, it's a subject we can all laugh about and have fun with, and even mathematicians make mistakes. So here's the moral of my story, um, enjoy playing with maths, and let's have a good conference where we play with maths. Thanks very much.